Today's video is sponsored by Taurus. I love their iPad cases, and you will too. I make a lot of videos on how to use various apps on your iPad, you know, really basic stuff. And I do that because I don't believe you have to take a deep dive into every piece of your iPad before getting off the ground. But sometimes, gluing those pieces together helps bring shape and utility to the iPad. My hope is that this high-level flyover will help you put some of those pieces together too. In this video, I show you how the iPad helps me on a practical day-to-day -day basis. Hi, my name is Rich. There are over 2 million apps in Apple's App Store. I'm pretty sure I've tried them all. But at the end of the day, there are only seven practical apps that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. And what I like best is just how integrated they are with one another. You know, like family members, they speak each other's language. I'm talking about Apple Notes, Apple Calendar, Apple Reminders, Apple Mail, Apple Messages, Apple Music, and of course, Safari. That's pretty much it. Even though I have a lot of other apps on my iPad, and I do use those other apps like FaceTime, but most of those other apps just never seem to gain any traction with me. In today's video, I'm going to glue these apps together to show you how I use them. Again, no deep dive, just raising the hood for a look in hopes that it'll help you think more about how you can make your iPad a productive tool rather than a media consumption device. First up is Notes. If you've watched this channel at all, you know I'm an Apple Notes fan. I've used it for years. However, I have been lured by a lot of other apps, but I just keep coming back to Apple Notes. And I think it's because of its simplicity. It's got a flexible folder structure that I keep as minimal as possible. You know, in the past, I've set up so many folders only to never look at them or worse, forget that I even have them unless I dig around forever trying to find them. A few years ago, I adopted Tiago Forte's Para folder structure. It starts with just four folders. Para is an acronym for Projects, Areas, Resources, and Archive. Projects are defined as something that has, you know, a beginning and an end, like a bathroom remodel. When the project is completed, it just gets moved to the archive folder. The areas folder is for things that have no end. I track my health here as well as, you know, auto maintenance, home maintenance, insurance, retirement info, and, you know, other such things. It's a place that covers areas of my life that are ongoing. And if it turns out that one of these areas does have an end, I just drag it to the archives folder. In the resources folder, I keep, you know, well, resources, things like manuals, insurance policies, legal documents like deeds and wills, anything that might be a resource that I would need to review from time to time. And lastly is archives, which is a repository for things I don't necessarily need at the moment, or maybe even ever, but I'm just not ready to get rid of them. Mostly completed projects and the like live here. You know, you get the idea. Apple Notes has so many helpful formatting options, too. You can have tables and checklists and collapsible sections and more. And you can't leave out Quick Notes. I use Quick Notes like Sticky Notes, an incredibly ingenious way to jot down things you probably don't need over the long haul. And when I'm finished with a Quick Note, I just delete it. At the end of the day, the Paris system just makes sense to me. I've tried a lot of other systems, but they always become a Frankenstein of a mess. And in the end, I just keep coming back to the pair of folder structure, mainly because it's so simple yet powerful. I'm an organizational nut, and this just works the way my brain works. And all of this occurs in Apple Notes. And don't forget that Apple Notes supports all different kinds of attachments as well, such as PDFs, images, audio recordings, and more. And best of all, anything on my iPad shows up on my iPhone and Mac. It's just hard to beat. Hey, now is a great time to jump in and tell you about today's sponsors, Taurus. I was excited when they reached out to me about supporting this channel. And wow, do I love their iPad screen protectors. I fooled around with so many protectors over the years, trying my best to get the thing lined up on the iPad, only to mess up and ruin the protector. Not so with Taurus's iPad screen protector. Just clean the iPad screen, snap the installation frame to your iPad, clean up any air pockets with the included scraper, and you're good to go. Honestly, this only took a few minutes to complete. But not only do you need a screen protector, you need an iPad case. Taurus is the original iPad stand case maker with the built-in dual kickstands. 
While you can use the kickstands, you know, any way you want, the shorter kickstand is just made for writing. It places the iPad at the correct angle to best use your Apple Pencil. In fact, I use Apple's Quick Notes like Sticky Notes, and with my iPad in the Taurus case beside me at my desk, I can pop the pencil out and jot down a note faster than using paper. Really, really handy. And what's so great about these kickstands is their infinite range of adjustability. No prescribed slot to set your iPad in. The sturdy kickstands can be finely adjusted to suit your viewing needs, not only in the horizontal position, but also in the vertical position. And this stand is rock solid. There's no give to it when you set it up. There's complete confidence that your iPad is safe and secure. Once you hold this case in your hands, you'll know what I mean. But despite it being so solid, Taurus struck a great balance between the case being lightweight and the security it provides for your iPad, and they hit that balance perfectly. And if you have an Apple Pencil like me, you know how easy it is to knock the pencil loose from the iPad. This case clearly solves that problem with a built-in pencil holder. Your stylus fits perfectly inside the slot, snaps to the top of the iPad, and charges. A perfect design for popping your iPad into your bag and going. I travel with my iPad a lot, and this case with the built-in dual kickstands is perfect for me. And my guess is it'll be perfect for you. Paired with Taurus' screen protector, this case is all you need for your expensive investment. To learn more, be sure to check out the links in the description below. And thanks to our friends at Taurus. Now back to the video. Next up is Apple's calendar app. There are a lot of calendar apps on the market, and many of them are frankly better than the Apple calendar. But you know, they're only a little bit better, not by a mile. And since Apple's calendar is free, I just use it. I can use it as a standalone calendar, or I can connect it to any of my Google calendar accounts, including my work calendar. I can easily create as many different calendars as I need. Creating an appointment is quick and easy. I like that I can add notes to any appointment as well. I can add an address, which allows me to use Apple Maps to navigate my way to the appointment. And you can create repeating appointments. You can add attachments, which is a feature that doesn't get much attention, but is really powerful if you have important meetings, such as a medical or legal appointment where you might need quick access to various documents. You can even set a travel time and get notified when it's time to leave. So here's the thing about the Apple Calendar. It checks off about 95% of everything you might need in a calendar app. And again, without any effort, all your appointments just show up on your other Apple devices. I usually add any appointments I have to the calendar using my iPad or Mac, but I always open it up in my car on my iPhone when it's time to leave. It's this practical simplicity that makes the Apple Calendar so useful. If you're not using this app, I encourage you to give it a go and see if it can fit into your workflow. My guess is it will. Apple's Reminders app just keeps getting better. I've tried so many other to-do apps over the years, and they all have their pluses and minuses. But one of the things I've learned is that you can go down endless rabbit holes trying to find the perfect to-do app. And at the end of the day, a to-do app's primary function is to show you a list of things that need to be done and when they need to be done. I mean, that's really the two big questions, right? What do I need to do and when do I need to do it? And in those two categories, reminders shines. It's easy to create and pin lists. It's easy to add a task. You can even add subtasks. And there are so much data you can add to a task if you want to, such as time of the day the task needs to be done, a location where the task needs to be done, and in my case, that's usually Home Depot or Lowe's, and even early reminder notifications on precisely when the task needs to be done. Most people don't know this, but you can even set the task up so you get a reminder to notify you when you're sending a text message to a specific person so you can talk to that person about the task. It's just crazy. You can drag calendar appointments directly into reminders from the Calendars app. And now with iPad OS 18, if you have a reminder with a scheduled date, it shows up in your calendar automatically. The blending of these two apps just makes so much sense, and my hope is that Apple will continue to build on this. Look, my whole point here is that Apple's Reminders app can get the job done for everyone except a very small group of people who have really specific needs that Reminders doesn't address. I'm not one of those people, so Reminders is my go-to app. 
I use it every day. And again, any tasks you enter into reminders using your iPad just show up on your iPhone and Mac. So Apple Mail is an app I've used for years. There are a huge number of mail apps on the App Store, and again, I've tried a lot of them. And most of them do a better job and are a little easier to use than Apple Mail. Spark Mail comes to mind. But if email is just another form of communication for you, then Apple Mail will work just fine. There are a lot of sidebar folders you can choose to view that add functionality to the Mail app, such as attachments, VIP, follow-up, and one of my favorites, Today. The Today view filters out all emails other than what's arrived today. You know, the Mail app hasn't changed much over the years, and what I've learned is that building a Mail app is apparently one of the hardest things to do in the world, especially keeping sensitive information contained in emails private. That may be why things have moved slower with the Mail app than other Apple apps. But as a straightforward email client, Apple Mail fits nicely into this suite of productivity apps. And if you're not a heavy email user with specific needs, then this app will work just fine for you. I use messages every day. I can't believe I'm saying that because the thought of typing a message seems stupid when you could just make a phone call. Let's just say I was a late adopter, but messages became more and more useful to me over time. A quick question via text is easier than making a call and leaving a voice message or sending a text to my wife while she's at the grocery store to ask her at the last minute to pick something up, or just a quick good night to a family member. Messages is my go-to app for all of this, but Messages does so much more. I can send my 94-year-old mom photos and videos of her great-grandson, and to me, the ability to do this is priceless. If you use messages like this, you know exactly what I mean. It still seems strange to receive a text from my doctor's office to confirm an appointment. But professional offices use text messages now more than ever. And while I read a lot of those messages on my iPhone, I don't think there's a better tool to read and respond to messages than the iPad, especially if you have a physical keyboard. While I didn't mention this in the Reminders segment, you can actually share reminder lists via messages. And you may not know this, but you can make a FaceTime call directly from within the Messages app. This is incredibly useful when you're in the middle of texting and you realize a conversation would just work better. I doubt if many people know about this feature, but it's there. What a great add-on. If you have an iPad, then Messages is a place you'll spend some time. Let's talk a minute about Apple Music. So if you're like me, you bought records when you were a kid, and then you bought 8-track tapes, and then cassette tapes, and then CDs. But what separated those days from today is that you owned the record you bought. In fact, I remember saving money to buy the records I wanted. I loved reading the liner notes and listening to my favorite music. Everybody did that. Well, that's not the way things run today. Now you subscribe to a service. And, just like messages, I was a late adopter to this. But here's the thing. Whenever I spent money on a record, I had something to show for it. You know, the record. If I stop my Apple Music subscription, the music is gone. Nothing to show for the money spent. But as I got older, my record collection wasn't really growing. I wasn't listening to music as I did when I was younger, despite the fact that I love music. Then I signed up for Apple Music that included a free trial period, and that was the hook. With Apple Music, you have access to millions of songs. You can create your own playlists, you know, think mixtape. And you can use Siri to start and stop the music. There are very few things in this world I give a wholehearted vote for, but if you're a music lover, then Apple Music is the real deal. What struck me the most was listening to songs I've not heard in decades, and from artists whose songs I liked back in the day but only heard on the radio. Now they're just a Siri request away. I'm a big walker, six miles a day, and I love listening to music on my AirPods from my Apple Watch when I set out on my morning trek. I've got my iPad paired to two HomePod minis and listening to music with fantastic fidelity is a daily activity. I've even created a few shortcuts that just automatically play my favorite genre of music. And yes, I'll just put it out there. I listen to disco every once in a while. Don't judge me. Here's the thing. You can't go wrong with Apple Music. My last go-to app is Safari. I use it to surf the web, do research, check on my YouTube channel, and so many other things. 
There are so many great features in this app. You can have different profiles with different tabs. You can view web pages in reader mode. And with iPad OS 18, you can hide annoying elements with just a click or two. You can bookmark pages, add websites to a reading list, as well as view websites in Apple private mode. But what sets this browser apart to me is its deep integration with Apple's ecosystem. For example, you can have a bunch of tabs open in Safari on a different Apple device, such as a Mac, and they'll show up on your iPad in the iCloud tab section. How handy is that? And not only that, any messages you've received containing a website link will show up in the Shared With You section of Safari. There's just so many small features like this that sets the Safari browser apart. A big part of why I use Safari is that it blocks trackers looking to follow you around the web. If I use Google Chrome's browser to look up shovels at Home Depot, I'll end up getting a junk email about shovels and shovel abs will pop up on every website I visit. This just doesn't happen for me when using Safari. And Safari on the iPad looks beautiful. It just works. So here's the thing. You can make your iPad a productive workhorse with just a handful of great already built-in apps. Spending time to learn their features is time well spent, which is in large part why I'm here. Well, I hope you can make your iPad the most productive tool in your shop. Learning that these apps work well together is the trick. Okay, if you made it this far, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.